Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sessor. There's a video here today. Bring us a brand new video how to make your very own Twitch emotes. Um, for some reason in my channel, I've never done an emote video, but I'm gonna show you guys basically how to bare bone kind of cut it down, good dimension sizes, all the dimensions you need for saving, um, and just like how to make your own emote if you're like cutting out your face, or if you were like kind of like doing like a cool slogan for like a text, coming up with a like, really cool layer style for that kind of stuff. So hopefully you guys just kind of get the entire base of Twitch emotes. And uh, you know, it's actually not you don't have to always have illustrated emotes, it can be like I said, your face, your picture, you can have a really cool text effect um so anyone can actually be an emote designer and letter literally anyone can also do their own emotes if you guys are not in that uh realm of being able to purchase them hopefully this video will teach you and all that good stuff but with that being said the merch drop is finally released 24th we will just kind of come back you guys see me advertise a little bit for the next two weeks uh with that being said though i love you guys i'll tell you guys later enjoy the video and uh, we're just gonna be starting off with just kind of like understanding emotes and getting them through and just just jump right into it enjoy all right guys first things first the document size i'd recommend to start off with is a solid 600 by 600 pixels at 300 resolution this resolution will help all of you guys when saving making the process super easy and quick afterwards after creating your document size the blank canvas is your space to do whatever style of emote you'd like for example i know a lot of you guys would like to have emotes of your own faces maybe the face itself was surprised like an angry face or just overall silly whatever video or clip this face might originated from or even like a picture that you might have taken yourself if it is a photo that you decided to grab from a video, I would highly recommend a program known as Light Shot, which is a print screen program I've actually used quite a lot to quickly highlight a face and use Control C and Control V to quickly copy and paste inside your 600 by 600 document. When you guys are done pasting your face inside Photoshop, the quality may not be best due to your actual camera. So here's a little tip for those who just need to make it a tiny bit better just work in your favor. What I would do is I would take your screenshot layer and make sure you make it into a smart object. Then proceed to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. In the starting window, you guys can play with your shadows, highlights, whites, and blacks, and all that good stuff, the clarity, just to ensure that the actual picture and the color itself is in the best in your favor. Then I would hop into the third tab on the top, which is where you can actually play with your sharpness. Here, I'd say if your face quality is super blurry, your sharpness amount can be over 60 or even 80, or even like 100%. If while increasing your sharpness amount isn't providing any changes, be sure to actually increase your radius. But to finally nail a better look, you guys can increase the luminance to about 20 or 30% and increase the luminance detail towards around 60 or 90%. And then hopefully by the end of it all, kind of tweaking and messing around with it, your quality of the face print screen could be way better than what it was originally. And also in turn, just kind of be better in the smaller resolutions needed for Twitch. Now, when moving to cut out your face inside Photoshop, you guys can use the combination of quick selection and the shortcut key on your keyboard located right here, just to bring up the quick mask mode. This is what you would use if your quick selection tool might have had a bit of trouble selecting. Using a brush to kind of fill in the spots that needs fixing and also switching your masking colors from black or white to quickly fill and erase parts of the selection. Afterwards, now to officially cut things out, you want to exit masking mode and simply choose layer mask. With your layer mask, even if you cut things out the wrong way, even with the quick selection mask itself, you guys can still go ahead and go with the actual white and black brush and fill and fix things up as well. Also, side note, before you guys even end up saving, you guys want to make sure the emote is sized to the edges of the actual document, that way it's taking up as much space as possible. Now, when you guys go ahead and finish and you guys are ready to save, you want to go to File, Export, and Save for Web. Or use the shortcut Control, Alt, Shift, and S. Then once your Save for Web table is open, you want to make sure you have PNG24 set as well as your transparency box ticked. So of course, be sure that your background is actually turned off. However, right above the Save button, where it says Image Size, is where you want to follow these dimensions. You want to make sure you change your image size to 112 by 112 for your first save, 56 by 56 for your second save, and 28 by 28 for your third and final save. These sizes are for when Twitch is actually viewed on multiple different devices. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to actually view it immediately as, of course, emotes need to be approved on Twitch. But if you guys would actually use this Twitch Elements dev site, it will help you view the emotes you made in a Twitch environment, which will help you a lot when viewing the actual emote in a cool little kind of different sizes and being sure that the emote itself looks pretty good at these small sizes, just in case you might have to make things bigger or fix things around. All right, homies, just because I'm an incredibly nice guy and not everyone, of course, wants to use pictures of themselves as emotes, Another cool thing that you guys end up seeing a lot is mostly the cool catchphrases or text kind of emotes in people's chats. And I'm just going to show you guys a really cool quick setup that will end up making it super easy for you. On a gray background, that way you guys see all the colors a little bit better, take whatever cool font that you guys might end up finding on sites like Defont that you pretty much think would help fit the phrase being said. For me, I chose the words, holy crap. After you guys want to basically set up a white word on the top and a color of your choice on the actual bottom. Following that, you guys want to open up layer styles on the bottom word by double clicking, and you guys want to use the actual layer style inner shadow. 
Then if you guys are in my recommended document size, 600 by 600, you can set your inner shadow settings to five distance, zero choke, and one size. Also for the color, I would recommend you guys to choose the same color as your bottom word that you chose originally, but just take the actual hue bar on the right hand side and move it up a little bit. That way it has, or I guess up or down realistically, but that way it has a really cool lighter color and lighter tone for the highlight. Then if you were to take both words and put them into one group and you want to open up the layer styles onto this new group, you want to go ahead and use drop shadow with these settings. 10 distance, 100 spread, and pretty much varying size, but I chose 16. And you also want to make sure that your inner shadow color is a nice either black or really, really dark color period. Then if you're using a new version of Photoshop, you can click the little plus button to duplicate the actual previous drop shadow settings. But with the actual new duplicate, the one on the bottom, increase the size and change the color to another color that would of course complement the actual inner word color. For me, for whatever reason, I just chose a nice pinker color to go with orange. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Whatever ends up popping for you, it is kind of how it works. However, this quick setup is just a nice start for anyone looking to add more highlights or just even textures. But overall, if you just have a really cool phrase you want to highlight it and just put in, you know, you know, an idea really quickly and right away, this will do wonders. All right, guys, it's the end of the video here today. I do hope you guys do enjoy the video. Hope you guys learned all the good stuff about emotes and how to actually make them. And uh, yeah, with that being said, if you guys have any idea with other things, I guess revolved around Twitch, if you guys are here from that, uh, that can just help you guys out. Let me know. I'll try my best to help you guys out as well. And uh, yeah, if you guys are not subscribed already, please subscribe. And of course, leave a like on the video if you did enjoy I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. So, so HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking ready, guys. Later. Much love. Enjoy your day.